are ready to kick it off. Uh, this is one of my favorite nights, I'm here to tell you. We're going to have a ball tonight. We're going to start tying things together. You've done a bunch of work. Tonight it's going to start coming together and gelling. Uh, I'm very happy my friend Vanessa is here. She's a graduate of the class, so she may ask some good questions tonight. But uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Let's start with prayer and we'll knock it out. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this evening and for this gathering tonight. And as we continue to talk about the handling of your resources, we just ask that you would guide us with wisdom. Help us to be able to make good decisions. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so glad that you're here. We're going to get rocking because we've got a lot of stuff to cover tonight. This is a night that I want you to raise your hand and ask questions because I want to start tying things together. If you have a question or a disconnect, tonight's the night to raise your hand so we can talk about it, all right? Next week, we're going to continue with the budget, so uh, it'll tie in even more next week. But tonight is a real important night. So let's get started uh, by talking about uh, the homework review. I always start with the money date. How are they going? Let's talk about it. Anybody? You having good ones, bad ones? You arguing? Is it getting better? What's the scoop? Okay, go ahead. Well, mine's going to be getting better because um, I officially paid off my car. Woo! Yep. Round yeah. of applause. And I see my title today. Paid yes. off your car. That's wonderful. Now, I have I have a little motto about when you pay off your car. How long do you keep it? Till the wheels fall <laughs> off is the answer. I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep in work. Congratulations for that. Now, may I ask, uh, Dorothy, how much money did that free up a month? $180. $180, which is tremendous. Now, you can go back and look at the budget analysis, figure out where you want to put that money. You reallocate that to wherever you're going to put it. I'm going to put 25 in savings. 25 in savings. And 25 towards my IDA. 25 towards IDA. OK, good deal. Good deal. So that's a start. Every time that there's a change, you talk about it and see where you're at. All right, just figure it out. Okay, one more money date. Somebody tell me how things are going. Yes, ma'am. So setting the goal was very important because before we got to that part because we were on the same page about the goal, so it made the adjustments easier. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, the, the comment was having that goal and knowing where you're going made the conversation easier to be able to put that money towards that, to make it happen. Please do not forget, I know we talked about it in week one, your goals, the things that are important to you, is where you want your money to go so you can accomplish it. And you have to always refer back to that and say, look, is this still, still where I want to be? How do I make that happen? And by doing that and staying focused on that, you won't be like most Americans where they go through life month by month, and at some point in their life they say, you know, I'm not where I thought I would be. I missed the boat. Don't do that. Stay focused on the goals that are important to you and strive for those. You have to tell your money to go there. Thank you for sharing that. That's a great one. Money dates are critically important. You must, must, must communicate. Have somebody that will hold you accountable. If you're in a relationship, most of the time that's going to be your partner. If you are not, then I want you to get an accountability partner that will help you stay focused and uh, accomplish the goals that you have. Real important to do that. Thank you for the comments. All right, budget analysis worksheet. Take them out. Now, let me make a couple comments. Have I put you guys to work these first few weeks? You bet. It hasn't all been easy, has it? It's not. This takes work. I love it when I hear financial people say on TV or on the radio, everybody should just have a budget. Just get on a budget, your life will be easy. Budgeting is hard work, but I'm going to tell you this. Once you have it in place, it takes minutes a day to manage. You're going to see some of that today as we go through it. So budget analysis, let's talk about it a little bit. What I asked you to do is to take the information from the financial snapshot on how much you're spending a month and putting that in the first column of the budget analysis worksheet. Now, oops, I'm sorry. And when you get that in there on the budget analysis worksheet, you have all that information, you ask the question, what is the most important question on the budget analysis worksheet? What's that question? What needs to change? What needs to change, right? Look at the middle column. My friends, it is so important that you look at that. Think about it. If you, this is the way your money is going and these are the goals that you have, then what needs to change to make that work? That one single question should force you to look at these categories and say, all right, I choose 
to spend less in the housing category. I choose to spend less in entertainment or even I choose to put more in savings or into investing. But that one question is so very important to do that. Then you look at that. Yes, what needs to change? You make those adjustments and you do the math. And then the last column is going to be your new budget that you've decided that that's what you're going to start with in your budget workbook. All right. Now, did anybody have any rev let, let me ask you this question. What did you change? What are some things that you decided you're going to change based on the budget analysis worksheet? Share with me, please. Go ahead, William. I have a, a personal loan that I was paying 12% interest on. Okay. I had enough, kind of, if I push it, I had enough in savings to pay it off. Wonderful. I paid it off today. You got it done. Congratulations. That's wonderful. That's true. Well, that's all right. We're going to build that back up because you have a plan. But I found out, we figured out that I had like $600 that I could put in savings. <laughs> From the budget analysis. I'm not going to do that. It's just that that's how much is. How sure. Okay. So you looked at the budget analysis. You realized that you could make some changes. And uh, what William said is that he had a loan that he was paying 12% on. That's quite, a, quite high. So now you've paid that off. It's done. You save 12% on that, and you freed up cash flow that you can use for something else. Wonderful. That's the stories I like to hear. Go ahead. This is a, to me, it seems simple, but to me, it's also a big thing. Um, I have, I've got the Roku player, so I've got Netflix and Hulu and the subscriptions to that. Great. I called my son and I'm like, hey, you know, because he's trying to save money. I've got these two accounts. Why don't you sign on to my accounts and save a couple of bucks a month? Because he's got a brand new baby. And he said, well, I'll sign on to Hulu. You sign on to my Netflix. Okay. So save me 10 bucks a month there, right? Right. But then I called my car insurance, which I've had for like six months. And I said, okay, he said, call you back after six months. What can you do for me? So she looked into it, realized I didn't have uninsured motorists. Oh, very important. So we added that, and I said, I want to get renter's insurance too. Add that on, and I'm thinking, it's going to go up. I end up paying five bucks more to add on 100000 for renter's insurance and uninsured motorists. Because you got the multiple but, discount. But I loved it. But also, I did auto pay, and that just boom, brings it down twenty dollars, and I'm going okay. <laughs> <laughs> it felt good. It's, it's really wonderful good. to do it's that, you know. Thing, so but it's just a, it's a few bucks, but to me, it's a lot. What Mary Jo did is what we talked about last week. She challenged something, calling the insurance company after six months, figuring out where she is. She found out that there was a hole in her insurance coverage with the uninsured motorist. Is that important in this state? Oh yes. Woo, man, let me tell you, you got to have that. All right. So after all this process, yes, she spent $5 more, right, Mary Jo? Is that what it was? $5 more, but now she's more protected. Why? Because she paid attention to what is going on in her financial life. You need to be aware of what is happening and challenge what you can so that you can have not only the protection that you might need in this example, but you can ultimately save some money in the long term and make that happen. Somebody else, what is one thing you said? You looked at what needs to change, you decided to do it. Go ahead, Chris. I realized that one sixth of my housing cost goes towards having a storage unit. Oh. It's an enormous waste of money in, for people all across the city and the state and the world. And the country and the world. Yeah, so, uh, so 90 bucks, 90 bucks a month on flushing down the toilet because I have a storage unit. I, I look, thank you, Chris. I hear this all the time. What Chris said is, hey, I've got a storage unit. I'm spending 90 bucks a month on that. In America, we have stuff. We have stuff. I cannot tell you how many times I've sat with families and I'm going through the budget and they say, oh yeah, I got, I got a, uh, let's see, a storage unit. I'm paying, I think, $90 a month for that. My next question is, what is in there? And you know what I get? Hmm, let me think. I think there's some <laughs> furniture in there, uh, maybe some clothes. They don't even know where the, what the stuff is that they're paying $90 a month for. And my second question is, how long has it been since you've taken anything out of there? And usually it's been a year, two years, three years. You see, if you got that much stuff, get it out of there, have a yard sale, take that money, put it in a category that you can use. But what Chris said is so very important, he's evaluating and looking at where the money is going 
<laughs> you must do the same thing to move forward, okay? And never forget that budget analysis, I've said it earlier, I want to say it again, is what decisions you made on what needs to change, have you included your goals? Because that is all important to make that happen. All right, we talked about the changes already. All right, did you determine what comes out when using your calendar? All right, this was tougher than it looked last week, isn't it? Take out your calendars. Now on that calendar, I should see writing on when bills are due. Find that document. Now that form is gonna be very important tonight because we're gonna talk about typing out your budget and putting that in place, okay? So, questions about that. How did that go? Here's what it looked like. Remember, we talked about this last week. Now, was it easy to figure out when everything had to come out of your paycheck? Was that okay, Kaz? That worked out okay for you? Good. Anybody have any problems? Now, let me tell you this again. It is critical that you know how money moves every single month in your budget. So you know what's coming in, you gotta know what's coming out and when so you can start organizing things. We're gonna use this information tonight as we talk about the binder because you're gonna type out your budget so we have a quick reference sheet in order to work from. We're gonna do that tonight. Are there any questions about this form? We're all good? Okay. <clears throat> Here's the biggie. Don't be lying to me. <laughs> Are you tracking your expenditures on a daily basis? Are you tracking your spending daily? I want to see nods. Okay, <laughs> good. This is important, my friends. It is foundational to taking care of managing your money. So you've got to do it. Is it easy? It's not, is it? It takes work to remember. But any habit will take 21 days to get in place. Be serious about this. Be locked into this, and it becomes a normal habit. You've got to do it every single day. Questions about that? All right, let's talk about the budget for a little bit. We've been busy. Let me tell you this. The groundwork that we have been laying for the last few weeks is going to come together tonight and next week. So all that work that you've done is a precursor to getting that budget binder together. But let's talk about what we've done so far. We've completed four of the six steps. Here's what I asked you to do. Determine your existing budget. Remember, they said the way to do that was to go back 60 days, look at your credit card expenditures, your debit, and the checks that you write, go back 60 days and break that into categories. Then you add that up and divide by two to figure out what you're spending on a monthly basis. It is the starting point. Does that mean that you're gonna be 100% correct based on that exercise? Absolutely not. You might be 90%, you're gonna be pretty close, but you're gonna learn more as we continue to track your spending. The next thing that we asked you to do is complete the financial snapshot worksheet. Now that form took some time to be able to do. You take the 60 days that you did on determining your existing budget, and I asked you to put those figures into the snapshot worksheet. That gave you a look at where your money's going in those categories, right? Then you took that information off the financial snapshot worksheet and you plugged it into the budget analysis worksheet to analyze your budget. That's what we were talking about tonight, the changes that you made. You asked yourself that big question, what needs to change? Then you determined what comes out when. What is coming out? You, started, you took a snapshot, a look, if you will, at what is happening in your financial life right now. When is the money moving in and moving out? These four items took a lot of work to do, right? Now, you never have to do these again if you keep up with your budget because it will automatically work. But here's the problem. If you stop and then six months later you go, man, you know, I should have listened to Mike. Maybe I should keep this up. You know, we've got to start again. Now you start over. You pick up the phone, you call me, you come in for an appointment. I will help you. But please understand this, if you stick with it, it automatically becomes more fluid and it works very, very smoothly in everything that you do. But you gotta stick with it. 
You have to. So we are done with these four areas of what we've done. Tonight, we are going to go and type out your budget. We're going to take the information, show you how to type your budget out. And we are going to organize the three ring budget binder, which will be very, is it important, Vanessa? Very important. Vanessa knows. She's been through this class. She's done a wonderful job with this. You ought to pick her brain at the break. She's very good at what she does. We are going to organize that budget binder, make that all come to fruition tonight. You're going to know everything that we've done. Before I move on, are there any questions about anything in the first four that we have already completed? All right, good deal. All right, let's get rocking. We're on step five now. We're going to type out your budget. Turn to page number 33 in your workbook. <clears throat> There is a movement every month of your money coming in and going out. I've asked you to complete your calendar so that you know when it comes in and goes out. So at this point in the class, you should know what is coming out of the first payday and what is coming out of the second payday. What, it, when, what comes out when? The information will come directly off your calendar. That's the form you're going to use. So here's where we're at. Remember, Karen talked with you about writing down the paydays that you have. You're going to put in the hard categories. Remember, hard categories are non-negotiable. Car payment, mortgage on the house, insurance, those types of things are non-negotiable. So items that are going to be paid in the first part of the month come out of the second payday. You get paid here, those dollars will pay for the first half of the month. Items that fall after the middle of the month, in this example the 13th, those dollars will be used to pay for those items that fall into place in the middle there in the second pay period, all right? So we take that information. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. Remind you, you plug in the soft categories anywhere you want. Somebody give me an example of a soft category. Anyone? Pick a, pick a soft category. Tell me what it is. Groceries. Say it again. Groceries, right? You're in control of that. You can make those changes and adjustments. How about laundry? Yep, you're in control. How about entertainment? Yes, you're in control. These are things that you control. Soft categories can be adjusted and put in anywhere in this form. All right, so a sample budget on page 33. Here's the way that we do it. Talk to them about how we've set that up with our memory stick and those types of things. We just, we are not very high tech, but we do know how to use a memory stick, which is good. So we, we just literally typed it out on just a Word document, typed it up, and then we saved it on a memory stick with the, with the date. Because then you can make changes very simply as things change. You just plug your memory stick back in, pull up your latest budget. If something he needed to go up, then something else has to go down. Or if more money came in, you just change the amount that's coming in and, and, and you can add to wherever you need it to do. It's just a matter of just backspacing and typing it in and then reprint. So it's very easy on a memory stick. It works very well. And you can also go to the website. We have a spreadsheet on there that you can go to and type the numbers in yourself. You can't save it there, but you can print it out. So whatever's easiest for you. What you're seeing in the, in the binder is a sample of what we use as well. Now, you type out your budget. You include which pay period the money comes out of. You see that on the form, right? The amount that is due for that particular expense. And then how does it get paid? So let's look at this and analyze it a little bit. My friends, don't make this harder than it has to be. This is simple. You already know because of your calendar what comes out when. All you're doing is typing it out. So we look at this and we say, all right, this is the first payday. The first payday. Now, our first category on the first payday is giving. We pay that by check. So you will enter how much money goes in here. Now, that could be the church or the charity of your choice whatever you want to put in there, but I want the total amount for giving to make that happen there. And we choose to do that by check. For the housing category, in this case, we have three subcategories that come out of the first payday. Those three in this example are the internet, the cell phone, and home repairs. Are there more subcategories in housing? So we make up for that in a second. See, we're dividing it in whatever way works easiest for us. You do the same thing. 
So here's what I'm trying to get you to think about. If you're doing the first payday, not everything in housing must come out in the first payday or the second one. You can split it up any way that you want it to be. So for housing, we write that down there, how much the expense is. We pay the internet by automatic bank draft. We have our cell phone, we pay that by check. And in home repairs, we do that using a cash envelope. We're gonna talk about cash envelopes later today. Then we have the food category, we do that by a debit card. And then automotive, and you can see how that works. Some are cash envelopes, some are by check. It's not rocket science. All it is is just writing it down. Now, the second payday, well, we have the total outflow right here. And then if we have some things that are cash, for example, home repairs, and these three items right here, when we get to that category later on today, we'll start talking about cash envelope. I'll explain how that works. But we know exactly how much we're going to use in cash. Now, the second pay period, same thing. Same thing. Remember, you already know what's coming out when. So you look at that, and I'm just going to use this example. I'm not going to go through everything. The remainder of the housing category for our subcategories, now they're taken care of in the second half of the month. Are there questions about how to divide this out? My friends, this is so important. I'll tell you why. Right here, as we start talking tonight about this three ring binder, right in the front, remember I asked you to buy a binder that had a slot in the front. Right here, you'll see ours. And remember, this is here every week. You come and you look at it, all right? Touch it, feel it, look at it so you get an idea. Should we can have Karen be Vanna White. She can hold it up for you and show you how <laughs> things work. But we have it right here. It is a quick reference for us. So every single payday, all we have to do, Karen will say, okay, what payday is it? It's the first payday. All right, boom. Here's what comes out. It's that simple to be that organized. We keep it in the front of this binder. That's where you put it. Okay? Questions? All right. All right, place your budget in the front of your binder. I just showed you that. Okay, now, now here's where the rubber hits the road. We're going to start organizing this binder. Uh, this is the fun part. All this work that you've done, all the time that you've committed to organizing and understanding what is happening in your financial life, is going to be inside this binder. And we're going to talk about that right now and how that's going to look. So let's get started. Just to clarify, your money is going to be in one of two places during the budgeting process. It's either going to be in cash, if you choose to do some things in cash like we do, or it's going to be in your checking account. Turn to page 34. That's where this information is. You don't have to write it down. That's where it is. All right? Now, you are doing a paperwork transfer of funds from the checkbook to the budget binder. Let me put that into context. You are going to have your money deposited into your checkbook. Most of us do that from whatever income we get through our employer or other ways. That money ends up in the checkbook. Now, when that money is in there, it is in one big bucket, right? And we tend to spend from that bucket, and when we run out of money, we stop going out for pizza. Okay, that's how we tend to budget. What we're doing now, remember, we're thinking in categories that are on the financial snapshot worksheet. So you no longer are thinking about it as one big bucket. That's a lot of buckets. So when you put the money in your checkbook, it's okay to leave it there. But you take and you write down out of that money how much of that goes into housing, how much of that goes into entertainment. You're going to write that down in this book on what's called a category ledger page. I'm going to teach you how to use that in just a moment. And then the last item here, every dollar has got to be accounted for in the budget binder categories. Remember, when you got to the bottom of the financial snapshot and to the, bud and to the budget analysis bottom, you should have a zero balance. Every penny that is coming in should be accounted for going out. Every dollar has a job assigned to it, whether it's in housing or automotive or entertainment or wherever it is. So every penny that I have is in this somewhere. Everything's been assigned a job. Okay? All right, let's start wrapping it together. 
All right, here's your binder setup. You already purchased your three ring binder. You have labeled and inserted the dividers according to the 13 categories on the financial snapshot worksheet. So if you look at ours, as you're going through here, we have all these categories. First one is giving. Second one we have is taxes. It's not a normal one that you see, but we added another one for us. Is that okay to do? Yeah, you can have as many categories as you want. Make this work for you. Then we've got the housing category, food category, automobile, et cetera, et cetera, already labeled and identified on here. All right, you've already done that. Let me just clarify that the word taxes, you're thinking, well, why are they keeping tax? That's actually because oh, yeah. we have an accountant and because we have a house in Texas and we're just a complicated mess when it comes to taxes. So uh, it's easiest for us to pay an accountant to take care of it. So. We will get the bill in May after the taxes are all done, and it's usually about $465. So we set aside, how much we set aside? $40? $40. $40 a month. We set that aside. So when the bill comes in May, I have it. I'm not now struggling going, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay this $465? So we just set that aside. So that's why that tax is there is for our accountant, because that just made life easier for us. Let me expand on that just a little. Thanks, baby. That's, that's exactly right. Let me expand on that. What we're doing is we're preparing for future bills. We're being proactive, not reactive. Is that important in finances? Yes. Have you ever gotten a bill in the mail and go, man, how are we going to pay that? Where's the money coming from? You'll never have to do that again if you organize in this way. Okay? All right. Now, place, you're going to place category ledger pages behind every single heading, every single category. Let's talk about that just a little bit, and then I'm going to go into exactly how they work. So here's what we've got, my friends. you got this highfalutin three-ring binder. I don't know what you paid for it, but it's a lot cheaper than buying software, right? So you've got this thing here. You spent a little bit of money, you bought some dividers. You have got, in the front of your binder, you type out your budget. You're going to do that this week for homework. So it sits right here in the front. By the way, you can put as much information in here as you want to. We have a lot of different financial things that we keep in this binder. Now, each of these category headings, for example, housing, you'll notice that housing is the main category, but there are subcategories that fall behind that. Please hear this, it's very important. Every subcategory, like cable, telephone, any of those, will have its own category ledger page. So you will have not just one behind a heading, but as many subcategories as there are behind it. Questions on that? For example, food is one category, right? There is no subcategories under food. So behind the food one, you will have one category ledger page. Housing has, I think, eight or nine. So it will have eight or nine of those uh, category ledger pages. And I'm going to teach you how to use those right now. So here's the way that this works. <clears throat> All right, oh, I'm sorry. Remember that the figures on the category ledger page are going to come from your budget analysis worksheet. Don't forget that. Remember that whatever you change. And here's how it looks. So I want you to uh, look at the budget analysis worksheet. It is on I'm sorry, category ledger page is on page 35. There's your budget analysis worksheet. Remember when you did this and you figured out what needs to change? Whatever you put here in your new budget, those are the numbers that you're putting at the top of this category ledger page. Are you all with me? Okay. All right. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Page 35 is your category ledger page. Let me explain how this works. Just a reminder, there's going to be one page for each category and subcategory. Am I clear on that? You can, but you don't have to put in category ledger pages for a wash category. What would be a good wash category as an example that? Well, you know, our, our internet is an automatic bank draft, and so that just, go, that just comes out automatically. So we, and it's the same every month, so we don't, we don't have an actual sheet for that anymore, but we do have it on our on our page in the front. It tells our budget. Our budget tells us exactly when it's coming out. You know, um, think about it. If it's the same every month and it's taken care of automatically, do you really want to sit down and write down $35, put it in, take it out? $35, put it in, take it out. 
don't have to do that. If you choose to, and I've had some wonderful engineers in here, and they just can't stand it, they have to write every detail down, so they do that. But it's up to you, but you don't have to do that. All right, so here's a category ledger page. Let's use this. This is how you fill this out. All this is, my friends, is like a checkbook ledger that only accounts for one expenditure. That's all it is. It's a checkbook ledger, just a way to tell what is coming in and going out. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's say that this is the food category. Food category. And you have decided that you're going to spend $300 a month on food. I know that's a low number. Everybody tells me it should be more, but just bear with me on the numbers, OK? All right. So you've decided that you're going to have $150 come out the first payday and $150 come out the second penny. You're going to buy food twice a month. Could I have had all the money come out of the first payday if I chose to? Can I do that? Yeah. Could I have it all come out the second? Yep. Could I have had maybe $75 come out here and the rest come out there? You are in control of this. You decide how the money is going to move in and out of your budget. That's how you do it. It's up to you how you set that up. Now, you'll notice at the top of here, I have got a section that's called annual expense. This is very important, annual expense. We tend to not think about how much we're spending annually on an expenditure. Now, Mary Jo was paying attention to what money she was spending for insurance on six months. But sometimes you look at an expenditure to say, man, that's a bunch of money I'm spending on an annual basis. It makes you think a little bit, right? So, I want to give you an example. I don't know how many of you like to go to four bucks coffee. Anybody? Okay, yeah, that gets you in trouble. Now, the reason that I'm using this example is because I had a family that came in and visited with me, and we were going through the financial snapshot. And I asked the question, is there anything else in your life that you are buying on a regular basis that we have not accounted for here today? And the wife in the, in the relationship said, well, not a big deal, but I swing into Starbucks on my way to work every day. I said, oh, okay, let's talk about that. So she said she goes in every day. I said, how much does it cost to buy it? She said, well, I go for, I go, it costs me $4 to buy it. She gets a, a cream of yucca, extra skinny, mocha, butterscotch, something. I don't know what she gets. But it cost her 4 bucks a pop to be able to do that. So I said, okay, let's do some math. So I said, look, we got $4 a day for five days a week means you're spending $20 a week to have a cup of coffee. Does that sound right? She said, yeah. I said, okay, let's take it further. So if it's $20 a week, that means every month, because you're going four weeks, you're spending $80 a month on coffee. She said, yeah. I said, all right, let's take it to the next level. You do that for 12 months at $80 a month, you're spending $960 almost a thousand bucks a year to have a cup of coffee. She said something to me that is very important. She said, I don't want to do that. But you see, she didn't realize how much money was going out because it's only $4 a day. So here's what you have to look at. What are you spending that you're not accounting for that is a hole in your budget fence that money's squeaking out? So what she elected to do she said, all right, I'll make changes, but I need my coffee. I said, OK. She decided to go to McDonald's and get coffee, except for on Fridays, where she went in and got the one that she liked. She took the extra money and put it in her savings account. Good decision. Good decision. So I want you to think annually at the top of these pages, because it may shock you into what you're spending in that category. You need to think about it and be aware of it. Okay? You'll see that in our budget binder as well. Questions about that? All right. So now we've got it figured out. This is the food category. We're spending $300 a month. We've allocated it, the first and the second, half and half. So on the August 1st, I get a deposit, and I put $150 into this account. Let me clarify. Where is that money actually sitting? Where can it be, that $150? It can be in my checkbook or it can be in cash, right? It's in one of those places. So it's in the checkbook as an example. So I transfer it to a paperwork transfer and I deposit right there $150 of whatever's in my checkbook is accounted for for food now. So 
go shopping on the fourth of the month at the grocery store, I withdraw $135. In other words, I'm spending $135 to buy food, and I have $15 left. You see how you do the math? On the 15th of the month, I get paid again. I make a deposit of $150 into that account. Right now, I have $165 that I can spend for the remainder of the month in the food category. I go shopping on the 20th of the month. I spend $127, and I have $38 remaining at the end of the month. Now, here's a test question for you. If I have $38 remaining in that category or any category at the end of the month, what should I do with that money, that $38? What do you think? Emergency Say it again. Emergency fund or savings. Okay, could go into my emergency fund or savings. That's one answer. What else? Pay debts. Pardon? Pay debts. Pay debts with that to be able to take it out. Let me tell you what the answer is. You leave it there. You leave it there. And let me tell you why. Remember, we are thinking annually, right? What happens, and this is an example, what happens to the cost of food on Easter, Thanksgiving, and Christmas? Goes up. So you see, if you leave the money in whatever category that is, you are prepared for the higher expenses throughout the year. Same thing's true in automotive repairs. Just because your car doesn't break down that month doesn't mean you take that money out and use it elsewhere. Because when it does happen, you want that money allocated. Here's the answer. You're budgeting annually, putting money away monthly, and you leave it there till you need it. Does that make sense? You're preparing for things. Very important concept. OK, good. Other questions? Other questions about that? Good to go? All right, now. Does the economy stay stable every single day? Let me tell you, the price of gas going up, going down. It's moving. You know what's going to happen. When the price of gas moves and they have to pay more money to ship something to your grocery store, what happens to the cost of the food? It goes up, right? So we need to be able to adjust for the economy. And here's how you do that. Turn to page 36. You add up the previous three months' expenses on your category ledger page, right in this book. You keep these for three months. Keep them for three months. At the end of that three months, you add them up, you divide the total by three, and that becomes your new budget figure for the next three months. Some are going to change quite a bit. Gas may change quite a bit. Some are not going to change at all, but you just need to understand that you need to adjust these periodically. So we recommend every three months that you do that. Let me show you a couple things here. All right. Here's the, here's the way this is working now. All this work that you've done is this is where it's tying together. The first thing that you're going to do, starting this week, it's part of your homework, you're going to take out your calendar. And you're going to sit down at a computer, and you're going to type out what your budget is. What's coming out the first? What's coming out the second month, the second half of the month? All you're going to do is just sit down and type it out. You already have the information. You already know what's coming out the first and the second. You just type it out. Then you're going to use your category ledger pages. Remember, there's a place in the website. You can go download 1,000 of them, as many as you want. There's an extra one in here. You can go make copies of it. You take the information off of this budget sheet right here. Simple. You put one behind giving. And you say, all right, for us, our first one here is our church. We give $250 each payday to our church. So we write that down right here, and then we start listing it in whatever we're spending. Karen, or Karen and I have an envelope for generosity that we put aside money so if we see someone in need, we can help them if we have the resources to do that. So we write down generosity subcategory on the same page. We set aside $100 on the first payday. We put that in an envelope. That's $1,200 annual expense. Right now we have, if you look at this, and you're welcome to do that, our last deposit, we have $500 in that envelope that at some point maybe God will lay on our hearts to be able to help somebody in need to be able to do that. You go through every single one of these, every single one, and you say, all right, I'm here in the, in the housing one. Here's home repairs. 
I'll write down home repairs on it right off the off the budget. $120 a month, $1440 a year, and it tracks exactly what's going on. You must, absolutely must, get your receipts when you buy or do anything and write it in here. Write it in here. So here's the deal. Because we've taken the time to do this. Karen says, all right, I need to go out and I need to buy a new pair of shoes. I say, okay, what do we got in the clothing category? We pull this off the refrigerator. By the way, the refrigerator is the best place to put this. <laughs> put it right on your refrigerator. It's easy to get to. If you forget to write things down every day, take this budget binder and put it in front of the TV because you're going to turn that on. And you'll see it and it'll remind you to do something with it, right? So right now we have $42 in this account for clothing. So Karen can buy shoes if they're $42 or less. Payless. If they're, what? Payless. Payless, that's right. So she can do that. And we just went through a little bit of a spending thing on some of our clothing, so we only have 42 in there. But you see now, because I can turn to any category, and I can tell you exactly how much money I can spend in that category, I am now making decisions, spending decisions, on the reality of the budget not the emotion of the purchase. Do you see how important that is? This binder is the way that you're going to conduct your financial life. It's an easy thing to do, and we're going to talk more about that. Just for an example, this weekend, my clock radio with a little CD player that I've had for probably 20 years finally gave up the ghost. And you're just lost in your bathroom when you don't have a radio or a clock to see what you're doing. So I went out this weekend and I checked the, the housing repair because that's what we, anything that comes to the house, that's the category it's come out to. I had $62 in there. So I knew that no matter what I looked for, that it had to be less than that. And that had to include the DAX. So I'll tell you what, it's hard to find a CD clock radio <laughs> anymore because I am guess that's not popular technology. Everybody wants to stick their phone in there. I don't care about my phone doing in there. I just wanted to be able to play my books on CD or, or the radio. You bet. So uh, I, did I finally found one for $35 at Best Buy. So I knew how much I, I had in there. Now I didn't have the $62 in cash on my person, but I knew that's how much was in that envelope. So, so I went and I bought it for 35 and I came home and I put it on the Visa card. And I wrote down the $35 in there and I took 35 and I, and I actually moved the money then over into the Visa card from, from the housing envelope. So I just immediately, the same day, I took my receipt, did it, now I can toss the receipt. I didn't keep the receipt because if it dies, I don't care. So we went from there. How do you organize the envelopes? Are they in the binder? Let, no. let me defer that because we're going to cover that. Okay. Now, let me defer that. Great question. Let me take this question first. Dorothy? I'm um, getting ready to start a home business. Um, should I do a separate binder? For Great that? question. Dorothy's question is, I'm getting ready to start a home business. Should I have a separate binder? The answer is yes. If you are starting a separate business, you have a different tax liability. You're not to co-mingle finances and doing that. The uh, folks that I work with, I highly recommend you establish your own budget binder, same format for exactly what you so do there. personal expenses and then business. You betcha. You betcha. Separate the two. Okay. Very good question. Very good question. Yes, ma'am. So you said you had the cash envelope and you moved the money. Did you deposit it into where you would pay the visa card? I have a little envelope and we'll, we'll show it to you. We have a, in front of our cash envelopes, I have a uh, little envelope marked visa. And then anything that I'm dealing with in cash, I just take the money from that and put it. And then whoever's going to the bank next will put that on the card. It's a little bit more work because you have to take a little bit of time to go do it. But just whichever one of us go to the bank next, Karen in this case would take the money from housing repairs, put it in the visa envelope. We both know it's there. The next one of us to go to the bank, we bring it, we put it right on it. We have paid zero interest in seven years yeah. on, on the thing, six, seven, six, seven years because of this process. You see, a credit card itself is not bad. It's the misuse of that product that gets you in trouble. It can be used as a tool be used as a tool. Okay, so let's go back to this now. You understand how to adjust for the com economy every how many months? Three. Every three months, okay? You got to adjust. Just look at it. Now, some of your pages aren't going to fill up that quick, so you don't have to worry about it. All right, here's the question. What if you run out of money in a category? Can that happen? Yep. Especially at the beginning. You can run out of money at the beginning because we're not quite sure what our spending is, right? We're getting a handle on it. So you might do that. So 
If you run out of money in a category, remember this. Excesses must be offset from soft categories first and then from emergency savings. Soft categories first, then emergency savings. So here's an example. You are short on money in a very important category, whatever that is. Now you go, man, where are we going to get the money for this, all right? You say, all right, let's go to a soft category. Let's say you're going to take it from dining out. So you go to dining out, you need $25. You go to dining out, and you say, all right, I'm going to take $25 from there. Please hear this. You are not borrowing from that soft category. You are making a conscious decision to take that money and use it elsewhere. You don't try to pay it back. Oh my gosh, there's not enough volume on the planet. Okay, don't get into that, okay? So, probably shouldn't have gone with that example, I guess, but. Okay, so think about that. You just choose to take it from a soft category. If there's not a soft category, that's why you have emergency savings. What is your first level of emergency savings you try to get to? Awesome. Thousand bucks, all right? So you just say, look, I'm gonna take 20 bucks out of savings. That's okay. Is anywhere on this slide did I mention using a credit card to make up the difference? And you will not do that. That is a recipe for disaster in your finances. Recipe for disaster. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Here's an example. Let's let, you know, maybe you're using a budget analysis worksheet. Let's say in the car example, it's $450 what you've allocated in the auto category. That's for everything in the automotive, your insurance, your uh, payment, whatever it is, whatever that number is for everything. But the price of gas has gone up. Could that happen? Oh, yeah. yeah, it could happen tomorrow, right? All right, so price of gas goes up, and you know that you need to increase this by 25 bucks. What kind of category can I take that from, hard or soft? Soft. Soft category. So I look down here, and I see all these categories, and now I look at clothing at $135. Karen and I have a money date, and we sit down and we hold hands and say, I love you, baby. <laughs> <clears throat> Where are we going to get this money from? All right. So we sit down and we talk about it, and we decide that we're going to take money from the clothing category. So we decrease that from $135. We decrease it by $25 for that money to be used in the auto category. So this goes down to $110. Now, we come up here, we went from 450 to 475, right? We chose to do that. That was our decision to make. Now, did I have to take all 25 out of the clothing category? No, I could have took five out of dining out, five out of clothing, five out of laundry. You see, use this as a tool to make it work for you. That's what happens if you run out of money. There is an art to budgeting. There's an art to budgeting. Questions about that? And then okay. you go and put your, your memory stick in and you just make the changes exactly. and print. You go in there, we would, the next step, thanks for bringing that up, hon. The next step we do after we made that decision, we say, okay, let's, let's take out the memory stick. We just go in there and make the change on here and we're good. You make the change on here, you make it on your budget, in your budget binder, on your category ledger page, and now you just move along. My friends, please understand. Once this is in place, this takes minutes to do. On a daily basis, all you're doing is entering the expenses, right? On paydays, money day days, or days when you have to make an adjustment, it might take us 15 or 20 minutes to just massage this to make it fit. But now you have a tool that gives you enough information to be able to make decisions with. That is what this binder is all about. Okay, good. All right, we're going to talk about the cash organizer after the break. It's one of my favorite things to do. Now, during this break, if you have questions, come up and ask us. I'm going to take our, th our binder over here, and I'm going to set it over here. Karen, will, can you go over there? Mm -hmm. Karen will come over there. She'll do a show and tell, be man and white for a little bit. But I want you to touch this and feel this and look at it so you see what we're doing there, okay? I want to point out one more thing in the binder that's, that's important that I had neglected. I apologize for that. Uh, this is more than just a place to write down your ledger stuff. Mm -hmm. Remember what I had you purchase, uh, I said, okay, go ahead and purchase these dividers that have these pockets in them, right? So you're probably going, what the heck's these pockets about? Mike wanted me to spend more money. 
but that's not what it's for as you go through here you'll notice that we keep pertinent information in here regarding a specific category so this one right here shows our tax receipts from paying our account last year if you go to automotive you'll see that i have some receipts for warranty car parts in there for the housing category because we're paying principal payments on it we have some information in there about that this binder when you look at the top of different things like when you get to the automotive category we've got all our information for our account numbers for our car insurance we use this as a full reference for everything financial it's a it's like a uh, really looking at a reader's digest version of everything financial with quick reference phone numbers and stuff in it so use this in a way that will help you write all kinds of stuff in there that's what this binder is for all right that's the binder last chance questions on this we're all going to cover some more next week but we're doing good all right all right now we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the cash organizer system let me address a few things with that first of all we're going to talk on page 37 is how to use the cash envelope system go ahead and turn to that page you don't have to read it don't worry about it it's going to be all up here now in talking about the cash envelope I'm sorry when I talk about the cash envelope system this works 100% of the time this is old school budgeting folks I wish I could tell you Mike Cosgrove invented this and I'm getting royalties from everybody on the planet that's using cash envelope that would be not true this works well when I was a young man my grandmother had on her counter in her kitchen mason jars you guys know what mason jars are all right and on those she had cash in those and as a little boy nine ten years old it was cool to see cash in those mason jars but she had a label on each one she had things in there that say electric and gas groceries stuff like that exactly what we're talking about now so that is where I was first introduced to this so here's the way the cash envelope system works let's say that <clears throat> you saw in our, our budget that we have some categories that we use for cash so you go out and you buy one of these envelopes now you can get this at the dollar store how much will you pay <laughs> man you guys are sharp you're on top of it <laughs> you pay a buck all right you can also get them a staples you're going to pay a little bit more so what you do is you buy one of these and you label it with the categories that you have decided to use cash for there are some that you should use cash for without a doubt entertainment is one of those categories use it for entertainment dining out those types of things another category that I highly recommend that you do is gifts because gifts will get you in trouble so I recommend that you mm -hmm. do that in cash Karen knows all about uh, oh I do that system why don't you go ahead and elaborate on why we use cash for gifts on that honey because I tend to overspend in gifts that's my downfall department so um, um, we I do it in cash I set it aside I decide how much I decide it forced me to decide how much I was going to spend on what I call non-essential people that you buy gifts for um, nieces nephews not immediate family um, wedding presents baby shower presents these kind of things that come up so that you don't get wild and crazy with it so it is a lot he harder to shop with cash and, and, and spend the money than it is to just go in and swipe, swipe, swipe. You're like, oh yeah, that's $90. Oh, but that's cute, swipe, because it didn't mean anything. But if I have to pull $90 out of my envelope for cash, I'm going, no, they're getting something else. I'm putting that back. So I love you, but not $90 worth. So you know, you, it helps you really think this through a lot better. Um, it is a, it is a um, very freeing, and Mike doesn't worry about it anymore because at Christmas, right after Christmas, then the bills were all coming in when I, from the Visa card and everything else. And of course, my answer always was, well, I got it, I'll pay it. I didn't know what I was gonna pay it with, but I, but I did. But now I don't, he doesn't have to worry about it because when I'm out of money, I'm out of money. So I wanna make sure I'm never out of money. So I really am careful with it throughout the year. Um, you have, you, it takes you a while to figure out what your amount is gonna be because it's, it's um, you have to decide what's important to you. I have two children and a, and a daughter-in-law that don't live anywhere near me, so everything has to be mailed to them. So that has to come out of something too. So that comes out of my gifts as well. So I'm, I'm getting even better at shopping like at places where I, 
I'll or order something from Home Depot and pay for it and have my daughter-in-law pick it up there in, in Grand Forks rather than mail something. So I'm getting really better at saving my money along that way. But if, you, if you're dealing with cash, you will just be much more efficient in the holidays and birthdays and, and everything else. It will rein you in. Any category that you have trouble with should be in cash. It just should be. But at least those two categories for sure to be able to do that. All right, so here's the way this thing works. Karen comes to me and she says, baby, listen, I want to go out and I want to see a movie and I want to go out to dinner. And I say, honey, I'd love to take it. Let's go ahead and we pull this off the refrigerator. Let's see how much money we have. I go in the kitchen. I slide this thing off the refrigerator. I open it up and I turn to the entertainment category. And I look in there and for the sake of example, I have $50 in there. And I said, baby, why don't we go out and go to a movie and go get ourselves some dinner? Now, is there a way to save money going out to see in a movie? What can I do? Dollar movie, right? We can go out and see a dollar movie. If I haven't seen it, it's a first run to me. So if I can go get it for a dollar, that's great. There's also a dollar movie store over on Paseo that on Mondays you pay a quarter. So quarter movie, pff, I'm in. All right, I can do that. So we take this down, we know how much money we have. We go get the cash envelope, and I take out the cash envelope with the $50 in it. Karen puts it in her purse. We say, all right, we're going to go to the movies. So we go, we drive over there, we go up, we go to the lady at the window, and we say, we want to see, we want two tickets to whatever movie. Give her the cash. She gives me the two tickets and the change, and I get the receipt, right? I put the dollar, the paper money, back in the envelope with the receipt, put it back in Karen's purse. I take the change change and I put it in my pocket. We go in and we watch the movie. We enjoy that, we come back out of there. Now, we get done and say, all right, we both know we have $50. So we say, all right, where would you like to go eat? We already know how much we have to spend. So we say, all right, we're gonna go to a steakhouse, we're going to get some steak, all right? We go there, we come on in, we go in and we sit down. We already know how much money we have, so we're not being stupid. We're not saying, hey, let's get two steak and lobsters with all the stuff and everything else. We stay in the budget. We enjoy the evening. The lady brings us the bill. We take out the money to pay her. She goes, she brings us back the uh, receipt and the change. I put the paper change right back into the envelope put the hard change in my pocket, and I leave a tip. The tip is part of the evening, so it comes out of the same envelope, all right? Now, we're done. We head back to the house. As soon as I walk in the door, I slide this off the refrigerator. I turn it to entertainment, and I take out the envelope, take the receipts out, and I write it down in here. Now, I know exactly how much money is left in there to the end of the month. So let's say we're coming close to the end of the month. Karen says, honey, there's this great movie. I want to go out to a movie and a dinner. And I say, okay. And I slide this thing off the refrigerator and open it up and it says we got $3 in there. We have a decision to make, right? I can say, all right, let's take that $3 and we can go to McDonald's, get one cheeseburger, cut it in half, get two glasses of water, and we can watch a Netflix show that night. <laughs> or what we can do is we can say, look, let's wait till next payday when we put more money back in that envelope. My friends, it helps you make decisions that don't get you in trouble. Mike and Karen Cosgrove used to do this. You want to go out to movie to dinner? Well, let's go. I'll pay for it with the credit card. We'll pay for it later. Do you pay for it later? No, you're paying interest later. You see how that works, my friends? You see how this works? in writing things down, in a very short amount of time, I can make a realistic decision on whether or not that purchase fits into the budget. And it works for us incredibly well. So that's how a cash envelope system works. Now, what do you do with the change that's in your pocket? Here's the question. Here's the answer. You always round up in this binder. So if I spend $36.18, I'm going to round up. If I spend $36.99, I'm going to round up. You just always round up. Because that hard money, the nickels, dimes, quarters, are in your pocket. What I recommend that you do is take that out and get a jar. 
and just put that loose change in a jar and let it build because you're going to be able to use it for something. Tell them about the story about the lady at the credit union. Um, we went to the credit union and uh, of course a lady, a man got in line, he was a little ahead of me and his wife went over to the coin machine at the credit union and she dumped this whole jar of thing and of course everybody knows you're, you're doing your change because you just hear it and half the time the alarm goes off because it gets stuck and they have to come fix it but, and then, but then she get, they get, you get a receipt so she joined her husband in line. And so, you know, she went and they did their thing and, and they left. Well, I got that teller after she was done. And so I went and I said, wow, that was interesting. She must have had a lot of change. She said, oh, she does this every year. Her, whole, her and her husband and their family put all their change in a jar. And then every August they come and they change it out. And she says she always has between $450 and $500 in change. And that's what she uses for school supplies, school clothes, anything else the kids need. Oh, wow. It's a great way to do it. Uh, one of the things that I like, that, that I encourage people to do, put that money in a change, uh, change jar, maybe give that to a family that could use it. What a blessing that would be to them and to you to be able to do that. Think, think outside of the box a little bit on that. So, questions about the cash envelope? Are we okay? Works 100% of the time. Yes, ma'am. Right. And then, like, at home, it's like not the old people, you know, you bet. a lot of our neighbors have been broken into, and it's just kind yeah. of scary. Too. It, that, that's, a, that's a great question. The question was with all this cash, a little bit uncomfortable having cash on hand. A couple things you got to remember you're not doing everything in cash, because mm -hmm. that will be a lot of money that you're keeping. You're only doing a few categories. And you have to find a place to be able to put that. You know, just find there's a lot of ways to secure your money that are not in a safe, and I'd be happy to talk with those, uh, to you about those offline. And when you leave the house, you're not taking all the envelopes, you're only taking the envelope that you're using for that particular event or that particular purchase. So you're not taking a lot. For example, we do gas and cash. I don't take all everything and go to put gas in the car. I know it's gonna cost me about 40 bucks to fill it up, so I just take $40 with me, so I'm not transferring with all that money. Very good question. You have to be cautious about it, and if you'd like to talk to me about some places that you can put your resources or put that cash envelope, I'd be happy to help you with that. Okay? Can you round up to the nearest dollar? Or round up to the nearest dollar. That's right. You want to round up to the nearest dollar in the binder. It, whatever you spend, round it up because that pocket change is going to be in your pocket. Drop that in a jar. Good question. Yes, ma'am. So that makes me uncomfortable sometimes round up. You know that. can't get a little right. detail-oriented. Yeah. <laughs> we started, we started, like, so it was 2667. I'd right. write the 2667, and then I would do transfer 67 cents to the jar. Okay. I know that's overkill. That's okay, because you're, you're a detailed person. Vanessa, God bless you. She is, she is a very detailed lady, and I, I try to get her to, to let it go. But we're not going to be able to do that, so we're going to love her anyway. That's okay. So she said that for her, she has to write down the detail and then show the transfer of the change into the jar. If you want to do that, that's perfectly all right to let that happen. The, remember, you got to work within your comfort zone on what you're going to do. But Vanessa, overall, how's this budget working for you? Working well. It's hard sometimes. I might, I might go two days without writing something down in the budget, but on day three, I'm having to catch up and then, you know, definitely you stick with it because that was painful to remember what you spent for two days. It's a journey, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it takes time. Keeping here is, uh, I don't know if you guys have a lot of debts that you need to pay, but I have some debts that I pay off. I make sure to keep all the payment pulls, letters, and then a screenshot of every time something's taken out of my account that's relevant. So if it's ever questioned, I have that. That's, again, a detail overkill. But you you can make it. That's right. You can make it as detailed as you want, whatever your comfort level is, okay? Thank you, Vanessa, for And I might, I might just want to throw out that you're probably going, why do they pay their, their gas and cash? Most people will just debit or swipe their Visa card to do that. Um, we, we blew our budget almost every month, and it was almost notoriously in the cash category because we would say, okay, you know, we're, we, we have... Um, you know, we have $65 in here, and then we have this big honking truck that takes 100 to fill it up. 
and we would just say, oh, well, we'll just fill it up and we'll, we'll move the money later and stuff, and we never did. And we killed our budget on gas notoriously over and over. So we made a decision a long time ago to just, we're going to deal with it cash. Because not only now, you, a lot of times you get the discount if you pay in cash, you'll get three cents off, and three cents on a, on a 35 gallon truck is a lot of money so right. for us, so that really helps. But the other thing is, is that when I go to go with cash and I've only got $20 in there, that's all I'm putting in. Instead of, but because the old of us went and filled, every time we went to the gas station, we had this mindset that we had to fill the tank up every time we went. But if that is, if you don't have enough in your gas category to fill it up, then don't. Exactly. So the, but to stop it, we did in cash because again, I only got $20, I'm walking in putting $20 on pump four and it shuts off at $20 and I'm done. If we got really low in cash, now we might start thinking about carpooling. You may have to drive me to work, which is not a bad idea, and pick me up. I think that's cool. But you know, we may, we may have to do something like that just until the next payday when the money goes back into the gas envelope. So that's why for us that we went to cash. Now we're very comfortable with it, but we're so used to doing it, we're not stopping it. Easy thing to do. Now here's what I don't want you to do when it comes to the cash envelope. I'd like to order that 14 karat gold leather bound receipt organizer so I can get my finances under better control. No! You go to the dollar store and you get your little thing to be able to do that, all right? All right. I cannot overemphasize this. In fact, if I had a soapbox right here, I'd be standing on it. Please understand this. You can never spend from the checkbook again. You must spend from the budget, not the checkbook. This, if you look at the checkbook, you got a lot of money in there because it goes to all these categories, all right? You got to use this to make decisions with. Let me give you an example. Let's say that this is your miscellaneous category. That's a category ledger page inside your binder. And you have $7 in there, all right? Your monthly budget's $150 in that, and you have $7 left. And you say to yourself, all right, in the checkbook, I have $326. And I want to go out and buy a Blu-ray DVD player. And that DVD player is going to cost me $89. So here's the question. If I look at the checkbook, can I afford to buy that? Yes, yes I can because it's only $89 and I have $326, right? So I have a spending decision to make. If I look at the checkbook, because I have money in there, I can spend it. But if I look at that category, can I afford to buy it? Absolutely not, because here's what people forget. All these other categories are accounted for within the money in that checkbook. Let me give you a word of warning. The money in your checkbook will grow a lot in this system because you're preparing for future expenses. So you can't look at that checkbook and say, woohoo, we got money, let's go, let's party. No, you have to go by the category ledger pages so that the decision is based on your budget, not on the checkbook. Everybody got that? Okay? All right, good. All right, here's some tips for couples. I want you to consider a slush account. I want you to be able to have a little bit of free money. How much do we do, honey? We do $25 a payday each. $25 a payday. And we're, the nice thing is we're not accountable for it, but we note it on our budget sheet in the front of the three-ring binder. But when we spend that $25, we don't have to worry about it. So, you know, let's, when you get paid or when you have your $25, you can do whatever you want to do with it. So if Karen chooses to save that money up and be able to use that for uh, anything that she would like, she can do that. Uh, let, let's say, for example, here's a real world example. I, I, go, I like to go buy tools at Sears. They have the Sears tool sale. So I can save up that money all year and I can use that at the Sears tool sale and Karen doesn't say anything about that. That's my slush money. If Karen wants to save her money up every month and save it up and buy me a really nice Christmas present, I'm good with that. She can do that. She can use the money for that if she would like to. We just don't have any conflict on that. And you need to have a little bit of free money for whatever you'd like to do. Just account for it in that way. Yes, Chris? So you each have separate slush accounts? Correct. Well, there, it's, it's well, just cash. We yeah, it's just give, cash. We just give each other $25, you know, the, on payday, he gets 25, I get 25, goes we just in our put wallet. It in our purse or so that's always wallet. have so you have some cash in your in your yeah, wallet. Yeah, if she wants to stop and get a, a cup of coffee or something, or you go out with friends, you have a little bit of money in your pocket. To do I that. save mine and get my nails done once a month. Yeah, she does nails with hers. I haven't gotten a pedicure with mine yet, but <laughs> yes ma'am. Just to make it clear, because I'm still a little bit confused, I'm not sure I understand. 
Okay, five. good, okay. good. So, so when you get paid, you go to the bank and you take the whole amount of money you need for your envelopes and then you go home and you divide them up? Mm -hmm. And Janelle, this is a perfect lead into next week because oh, okay. Karen and I are going to demonstrate the entire process to you okay. next week. So that will become clear. Her question was, do you go to the bank and get the cash or how does that work? Next week you're going to see that. We're going to do a role play for you next week. So it become clear. Yes? So where do you account for this money? All we have it on is on the budget, but that's the only place we account for it. We don't account for it in any ledger pages at all. It's just on the front, you know, where it says first payday and second payday. It'll say, um, right. uh, our, um, I can't even know what we have it labeled as. I just, it's cash money. It, and uh, he gets 25 and I get 25 and it. But we, we don't have a ledger page that says, okay, I bought a Slurpee for a dollar or I went and did this. We don't have to do that. We just know that that money is being used for us to have a slush, a little bit of slush money. Now here's something to remember. It should be the same dollar amount for the relationship because otherwise somebody's going to die in their sleep. Okay. <laughs> you shouldn't, you got to make sure that it's even money all the way around. Okay. Bottom line, my friends, is keep this simple. This is a very simple thing that took a long way to get here tonight, but you know where we're going, all right? And it's simple once you get it organized. Don't make it too complex. Vanessa, God love her. She likes to have more detail. Whatever you would like to do is fine. But if you make it overly complicated for you, you will not do this very long. So keep it simple. Never forget, I'm a phone call away if you have questions. Pick up the phone and call me, all right? Okay. Michael, look and see what we what do we call it in our in our thing. Let's see. I can't remember what we even call it. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. On ours we call it slush. Okay, we just call it slush. You'll see fifty dollars on there, twenty-five for Karen and twenty-five for me. Okay? All right. All this sounds really good. Okay, this is where you're gonna go. But now we're gonna start talking about reality. It sounds good, but how do I get started? Some of you may not right now have enough money to go in here and just fund every category. We certainly did not have enough money to do that. So let's talk about how to get started here, all right? Real important to watch this. Let's take a look. We're going to get real for a few minutes right here. The reality is you may not have enough money on hand to fund the categories. In fact, I would say that most of us do not have enough money to do that. You're not starting at the beginning of the year right now. So if you say, all right, I I want to get ready for Christmas, but we only got a few months left to be able to get ready for that. So you may not have enough money to be able to be prepared for Christmas the way you want to. You need to set priorities in your life now, right now. Please understand, I'm asking for a bit of a sacrifice right now. Short-term loss for a long-term gain. So right now you may have to make some sacrifices, but let's take a look at priorities. I want you to think right now about setting priorities right now to be able to use your money in the best way that you can. Here's what we've got. Some categories are nice, but you can live without them for a bit. Here's some examples. Cable and dish. You can live without it. It's nice, but not critical. Dining out. You know, maybe you don't have to go out quite as much. What Karen and I did when we were digging out of our deep hole of debt, we went out on paydays only one time and it was cheap we didn't go out to any fancy restaurants we went out cheap just got out of the house and uh, went to dine out maybe your hobbies can wait right now if you have hobbies that are demanding money can you put them on hold uh, uh, here's what i'm asking for give me 12 months you give me 12 months of discipline you'll never look back so if you can look back you can say right now i'm going to sacrifice something here that's nice but i don't have to have it you can do it in the future, bring it back into your budget, okay? Maybe vacation this year. Maybe instead of going to Disney this year, you go to Moriarty and you have a really nice time and <laughs> you save a few dollars and uh, do that, okay? <laughs> All right. Some things are nice. Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead, Chris. One thing I, we're finding out is that you have money lying around your house in stuff that you don't example, if you haven't, the saying is, is that if you, have, if you haven't touched it in a year, and you haven't looked at it in six months, then it's time to put it on Craigslist. Right. And, and so you'd be amazed. Um, like I had this little pad, it's like a little tablet, and I bought the pen for it, and then it got out of date, 
and we looked up the pen on Amazon and it was still worth 30 bucks. And so somebody bought it on Amazon and that was going to sit there forever right. in my desk. And Very that good. stuff is just sitting there and it's ready cash, basically. You got to think outside of the box. Thank you, Chris. That's very, very important. What do you have? We're going to cover some of that in a bit here. All right, here's some other things that are nice. Maybe clubs that you're a member of, all right? Frequently, and I'm going to use this as an example, frequently people come in, they say, I'm a member of this gym and it cost me $60 a month to go. Well, my next question is, well, gym is nice and it's important, but can you go to, for example, Planet Fitness for less money to be able to do that? Maybe you can make adjustments. Maybe you can work out some way at home to do that. Now, clothing is not only nice, but I, I'm so happy that you're all wearing them today. But maybe you don't have to shop and spend a lot of money. Okay, maybe you can do things that'll save you money in clothing. For example, Goodwill, secondhand stores, where Karen and I shop. That's where we buy our stuff. Gifts. We love to give gifts, all of us. And I think it's an important part of what we do. But my question is this, how much are you spending in that? What we did is we just bit the bullet and we said, all right, we're going we're gonna to just button down. And we told our relatives and stuff, look, we're trying to do a little bit of budgeting, get things on track. This year, we're going to really downsize. We sent a lot of cards. Is it okay to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, people still love you. They don't, they don't cut you out of the will just because you're trying to make headway. But let people know what's going on. Don't be embarrassed about that. Newspapers or magazines, maybe you can get rid of those. Uh, maybe doing without manicures and pedicures on a regular basis, maybe doing that less or doing it yourself. You can save some money in doing that, right? Then you just got to ask yourself, what are some, some things that I have in my life that are nice, but we're going to give Mike 12 months of discipline. What are some other things that are nice that we can cut back on for that short period of time? Not forever, short period of time. Other categories. Some categories are very important, but maybe they can be reduced for a little while. Maybe your cell phone. Maybe you can take that cell phone and cut that back for a while. Change your plan to save money. Maybe home repairs. Not that you're not going to need them, but maybe if you have a plan right now of redoing something that's going to cost a considerable amount of money, put it on hold. Just say, look, let's just wait another year. Let's wait till we get this budget together before we redo the backyard or update the bathroom, as an example. Dry cleaning, maybe you can do without that and just press those at home. That would be an area that you can make some changes in. Children's activities, please understand, I love kids and I think it's important, but I have seen families go broke because they have all these things for the children and I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm asking you to ask the question, is that something that might need to be adjusted or changed to do that? Will you give them the story of the ballerinas? Oh man, yeah, I'll tell you, tell you a story about, uh, I had this family that came to me, they're dear friends of mine now, I've, I've worked with people for a long period of time, and when they first came to me, their children were, uh, let's see, were, one of them was 12 and the other one was 9, and mom and dad were convinced that these two young ladies were going to be the, the answer to dancing for the next 20 years, they were that good. And they were pumping money into it to the point where they were taking money out of their retirement plan in order to take them to New York and to Philadelphia to dance with these special folks. And I, I, they were very, very good at what they were doing, but mom and dad were going broke. So I had to have that conversation with them about that expense. We were talking about thousands and thousands of dollars. And we sat down and we talked about reality and where they're at and what, what had to happen. And it took almost a year, but they decided, okay, we need to make a change. Neither of these young ladies who I also work with who are now coming up to adult age, neither of these ladies even had any desire to pursue a long-term career in this. It was mom and dad's dream, and that's a good thing to have. But in their case, they were going to the poorhouse to be able to cover that cost. It, it's a difficult thing to make an adjustment on. Trust me, I'm not saying don't enjoy your children or do things for them. The question is, is this something you can make adjustments on? Uh, here's some hard categories, things that are critical. They take priority and they must be paid. You've got to pay your mortgage or your rent. I can fold out, a, uh, you can sleep on that couch, but I don't want you to. Utilities have to be paid, but you can reduce them. You can reduce them. You can make sure you turn things off for the electric bill. Don't use as much water. Be aware of what you do. One of the things that I do 
that I just, I don't have to do this, but I do it. I take a camp shower at home. I hate paying for water. I turn, I call it a camp shower. I turn the water on. I get all wet. I got a little switch. I turn it off. I go ahead and do my hair. I turn it back on and rinse off. I don't know if it makes that big of a difference, but for me it does. It's something that I choose to do. What can you do to save money? This hair that? can't do that. Karen does not do that. <laughs> you know, you got to have food. It's critical, but it can be lowered. You can start doing things we maybe we talked about it earlier, maybe doing menus. So you determine what you're going to buy each week for food and only spend that much. You will save a lot of money by doing that. I went to the commissary and I only go there, do my big shops. So I go there about every six, seven, eight weeks. And, uh, and I have been saving my coupons and I had $65 in coupons. So, you know, it, and it, when you need, most of it's cleaning supplies. That's what, that's what you run out of when you do a big shop. That's the stuff that really adds your bill up. But I had $3, $5, $1 coupons. So, I, in fact, I even impressed the, the, the guy who was running things at $65. Jeez. I said, mm -hmm. well, you just got to save them. Got to think about it. Your car payments have to be made. That's a critical uh, component. Car insurance is a hard category, non-negotiable. You got to pay that. Life insurance, if you have life insurance, it must be paid. Medical insurance and all debts, you got to make sure that you pay those. Those are all hard categories. So my friends, it's very important that you put money into savings. That's a hard category. You always have money put aside. So what I'm asking you to do is now, as we're coming into putting this binder together, set your priorities. I've given them all to you in the binder. Set your priorities and think about what you can adjust and how you can make changes. It's important. You got to look ahead and you got to pre-plan. Remember earlier tonight I talked about making sure that you're ready for future expenses. So here's some things that you got to look at. There's some things that are other interval billing. Not everything's monthly, right? Monthly bills are easy to account for, but what in your life is paid quarterly, semi-annually, or annually? I guarantee you're probably going to miss one. You're going to miss it because you haven't thought about it yet. When the bill comes, you'll think about it, but eventually you'll have them all. How can I prepare now for future payments? You probably don't have the money right now. So the question is, how do I get ready for these things that are coming up when I don't have enough money to make it happen? So let's look at it. Let's go back to our car insurance I used on the financial snapshot a couple weeks ago. Here's the situation. Your insurance is gonna be paid every six months as an example. This is the example we're gonna use. The next premium of $200 is due in August. Remember earlier in the class we talked about this? You start budgeting in May as an example, and it's due in August. So you don't have enough time to do this monthly, right? You only got a couple months to do that. So now you're going, holy crap, Batman, what do I do? Okay, that's what we're gonna fix. Am I allowed, as a missionary, am I allowed to say crap? Am I allowed to do that? Okay, thanks for the, I appreciate that. All right, you don't have any money set aside now. You don't have that right now. So $200 divided by six months, if we had six months, you would put away $33.33. Remember, you always round up in the binder, right? So you round that up to $34. If you put away $34 for the next four months, from May to August, you'd have $136 when the bill arrives, and 200 minus 136, you're short 64 bucks. So now you're going, man, this darn budget isn't working, right? Yeah, it is, but we gotta take some steps to be able to make sure we're ready for this. Where does the money come from? That's what you got to do now. We got to talk about how you're going to find money so that you can catch up on these things that are shortfalls. How are you going to do that? How are we going to say, all right, right now, what can I do? One of them is to set the priorities we talked about, right? But there's other things you can do now to be able to find money that you can get ahead of this curve so that from now on on the budget, you are prepaying for things in the future. Does that make sense, my friends? All right, let's look at it. You got to set your priorities. We just talked about that. Can you have a garage sale? You know, if you have a garage sale, you go through the house, dig out of rooms. Karen and I are getting ready to have one. We go through, we find stuff. Like Chris said, we haven't touched it in six months, maybe six years, who knows? You take it out there and you sell it at a reasonable price. You take that money, you use it in the categories you don't take and go, woohoo, let's go, vacation time. No, you put it in the categories. Can you sell something? The boat, the camper, maybe your kids, something. 
Get out there, sell something. What do you have? You know, here we are in New Mexico, and I don't understand this whole boat thing. I haven't figured this out. We have a whole lot of beach and not a lot of water, okay? But I see boats being hauled all over Albuquerque. <laughs> Can you get rid of the boat? Does it mean you never get to have that boat again as long as you live, or a boat? No. It means that right now it's a priority to sell what you have, short-term loss, long-term gain. Later on, the budget will permit, you go ahead and you buy it. Karen and I did that with the camper we talked about last week. We sold the camper, we have another one. But at that time, it made sense to sell that item. Another thing might be that pop-up camper that's been sitting next to your house for the last four years, whatever it is. Think about what you can sell. I love this one. Can you live out of your pantry for a month? You know, if, if you went and we have, we have in our refrigerator, if I went over to my pantry and I open up the fridge, I have food in there probably from 1984. It's been sitting in there, we fill the thing up, we continue to buy food, we stuff it in there. I hate it when Karen comes home from the grocery store and we're opening up, we're holding one side and we're, we're trying to squeeze in that, that roast in this corner. So we had to make a change, but think about it. Let's say that your food bill is $400 a month. If you eat all the food that you've already bought in your pantry and in your freezer, and you don't spend $400, you can put it towards, in this example, car insurance, right? Think about that. Get rid of all that food, just eat out of there. Yeah, you're gonna have to eat some stuff you bought that you don't really like, but eat it anyway. Can you skip this year's vacation? Just this year. Give me that 12 month period. Maybe you can take on some short-term additional work. This is short-term additional work. I don't want you working and putting that money into the budget. I want you to work, and every penny of that goes into funding the categories, putting the money in the categories. Can you temporarily stop investing? And this is an area that, as a financial planner, makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck here. But think about it. If you're putting at work, if you're putting in $100 into your, your retirement plan, and that is earning two, three, four, five percent maximum, and you're paying interest on credit cards or you don't have enough money to be able to put into these categories, doesn't it make sense to stop that temporarily, put that hundred into it? Please understand, Karen and I did this. Mm -hmm. Please understand, this is temporary. You have a date that you restart that because you need to plan for your future as well. So I say this with hesitation but understand, it depends on your circumstances. And you have to remember that that money comes back in your check, it's earmarked for something. You Correct. have to say, I'm stopping this investing, so $170 is not coming out. That is going to go towards this, and you have to do it. Yep. There, it's a sin if you stopped it and you ate it away. You went out and ate and bought stuff. That's just, that's just crazy. And along those lines, I'm gonna add one more thing. Under absolutely no circumstances do you take money out of a retirement plan without talking to me or a financial advisor first. If you take it out before you're 59 and a half, you pay a 10% penalty plus taxes and it will kill your retirement plan. If you think that that is the only way out of that, you call me, you come in, we will sit down and we will talk it through. But do not do that. Can you carpool or take the bus? I had one very nice person that was in my class in February, I think, and she said, I got a plan. I'm gonna get my bicycle, I'm gonna take the bus, I'll put it on the front of the bus, I'll ride it to work, I'll cancel my gym membership, that'll free up $40 a month, and I'm getting in shape. There you go, there you go. Think what you can do. Other ways to find money. Temporarily make minimum payments to debt because you can take whatever, if you're making extra payments on debt right now, use that to fund those categories to get them started so that we're getting a jump on things. Just do that temporarily. When we talk about debt, which is next week, we'll go more into depth on how to do that. Can you say no to entertainment for a month? Now, th this is not what I mean. I don't mean you go home and you turn off all the lights and you sit in a dark corner until morning. Are there things you can do entertainment-wise that don't cost money? What are some things you can do? Games. games, that's right. Be able to sit down and play some games. You can go, go to the library if you want. Go ahead, Janelle, what were you going to say? Netflix. 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 It doesn't cost you any money except for that $9 a month or whatever that is, right? You can go to the library. How about getting a picnic lunch? Go watch the kids play soccer.
take a walk do things that don't cost money we are so used to paying money to be entertained that we just think it's the norm but you don't have to do that right can you cut the cable yep now I'm hitting people at home <laughs> right can you cut the cable go to Netflix I I got to tell you I recommend that for everybody that was kind of a tough decision for Karen this was it took me four years to cut cable so don't think that this was an easy decision because my favorite shows were on biography and a and e and all the things that are not on regular channels so i fought that tooth and nail i dug my heels in and i wasn't giving it up but when they put raw wrestling on my sci-fi channel i decided it was time so i cut it out but now you cut your cable or you canceled your dish or whatever and now you're like now what am i doing with these tvs the best thing that's ever been to has been the digital antenna one time buy you can move it from TV to TV or buy one for every TV, but it's a one-time buy. 33 channels come through digitally over air, and they're free. And the quality of the picture is better than what's on your cable, I guarantee Absolutely. it. It's Absolutely. It's lovely. Now, it may not be your favorite sh places or favorite shows, but then we just then we went to Netflix, and we, do the st we stream, and we got the, um, the, the, we get the DVDs, because not all of the things stream when you want to watch them. Um, and, and, uh, and we did do, you know, we, we're Amazon Prime members because we do a lot of shopping, my bikes, car, car, car parts and stuff over that because of the free shipping. But that's a, that's a once a year. So, I mean, that's, I think it's $80 and we have it in there. We, we a lot of a dollar, two dollars, whatever it is, we have it set aside so when the bill comes, it goes. But they have the instant movies and the instant television that you can watch. The Roku's the, or any of the streamers, we started out with a, uh, PS3 player so we could get the Netflix then we went through the blu-ray because we had a blu-ray player and then we found out we could get Netflix through that but now we have the Roku which we just love because it plugs into every television you can move it we take it in our camper and if we can pick up Wi-Fi at the campground we got Roku working so we can pick up anything along, along that way so there's lots of ways and all those things are one-time buy and they cost you nothing so in fact we went to Walmart and the, of course the lady was standing there oh have you been have you noticed cable lately and we're like no we cut cable oh you should see how how cheap it is getting now. I said, can you do it for $17.10? Because that's what Netflix cost me. For both the streaming and the disc. And she said, well, no, you can't do that. Then I don't need cable. And you know, to be honest, occasionally we go places and we have the, the um, we're at a motel and you have your 500 channels or 300 channels. It still has 300 channels of nothing on there and commercials. I love no commercials. You bet. In fact, we still do that with Netflix. If you have Netflix, you know that there's a little break in it where it goes dark for just a second. And we always say, ah, no commercials. And we just love that, you know, it's just, I'm not gonna pay to be advertised to all day long. I'm just not gonna do it. So there's lots of ways, plus the library. Any movie that's gone to DVD will be in your library system somewhere. It may not be at your library. All you have to do is, is research it and they'll let you know when it's available and send it to you. So you can watch current movies. You might be three months, six months behind, but you know what, if you're like us and going to the dollars theater, you're waiting three to six months anyway. So you just go to ask for the library and uh, see, what, see when you can get it. So there are all kinds of alternatives to paying for cable and dish, and they don't cost you anything. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. The library also has the books for the Kindle. Yes, yeah. I, get, I do get lots of books for the Kindle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an absolutely incredible resource. If you're not a member of the library, get into it and go figure out what they have. It's just great. It's just such a nice place to be able to get uh, entertainment from. Remember that money goes first to savings. When you find this money, if you don't have $1,000 in savings, that money has to go there first because that stops the debt cycle that we talked about week two, right? So if you don't have $1,000 and you have a garage sale, that money has to go into savings first before it goes into these categories, okay? Once you have the $1,000, start putting the money into the categories. Got to be aggressive. I want you to be serious. Remember what you guys did to the Smith family? Those poor people, man. We sold their car. We stopped feeding the kids. We did all that stuff. I got to ask you, can you do it to yourself? Give me 12 months. Give me 12 months of just biting down and saying, we're going to make this thing work. I guarantee you at the other end, you're going to be home free for the rest of your life using this budget. It's so rewarding to go through this to make it work. Yes. How long did it take you before Great question. She said, uh, how long did it take us to get comfortable with this? Not a month, okay? Mm -mm. It took us, the first three months were painful. This was hard. It's not an easy thing. We had to sit down, we had 
we had some, dis we'll call them discussions. There were tears, there were arguments. <laughs> the, the first three months was tough. And we didn't have anybody to go to. You guys can come to us to be able to get help. The next six months, it smoothed out. And we were probably 90% there during that period of time. What was that? <laughs> oh. It, it, I will say it'll take you about a year to really nail it down because I guarantee you within that year you will have forgotten a bill that's going to come in. And then you're going to have to say, oh, no, I didn't even think about this one. And now you have to do some changing and stuff. So I would say between a year and 18 months that you will be, I mean, it'll be really nailed down so that life, when life happens, it doesn't throw you anymore because you're ready for it. And, and let me give you a caveat. At six months, you're going to be 95% yeah. there. We're just talking about the little things that aren't there. But it's not going to be easy. I'd be lying to you if I said it was going to be easy. But is it worth it? Yes, every minute of it. Yes, ma'am. So what constitutes an emergency that you're going to pull out of your emergency savings? Anything that is not accounted for in a category that must be paid in a hard category. That's the first thing. Anything that's not a hard category. Anything that is a hard category that you do not have enough money for is an emergency and you can go to savings to pay that if you can't get it from a soft category okay. good question and you and after six months even a year your soft categories will have gathered some money in them that you'll be surprised how much is in there you know you may hit you know you may be putting a hundred dollars in auto repairs and now it's eight months later you got eight hundred dollars and your water heater goes out in your house you're going, you know what, I'm going to take that from my automotive, the, my auto repair, because I'm still going to keep building money back up into it, but I haven't had to use it. So I will now pay, buy my water heater with that. And, but, and so, but if I didn't have it, if I only have $4 in, in any of the soft categories, because you've just had some expenses, then you, that's why you've got your emergency savings. So we'll always look first to see what we can use in our soft categories. You might have to piece it together. You might have to say, I'm going to take 300 from this and 200 out of savings. But at least you didn't have to take 500 out of savings. OK. All right. Questions about typing out your budget that we covered today. Good to go? Where does that information come from? Where are you going to get the information for it? The calendars, right? Your calendars. Category ledger pages, good to go? Cash organizer, any questions about that today? Any questions about how to get started, meaning what you're going to do when you go home tonight? We're going to give you the homework. We're going to talk about that right now. All right. Hand out the homework, it's at the top of each, each area. Go ahead and take one and pass it around. All right, this is going to be a busy week for you. The <laughs> best time to start it is tomorrow, not next week, Tuesday. All right? First thing you're going to do is you're going to have your money day. Make sure that you're communicating about these changes, about these adjustments. You've got to be on the same page. Type out your budget sheet and put it in the front of your binder. Fill out every category ledger page and place it in your binder. Now remember, please don't forget that it's more than one category ledger page. There's one for every subcategory as well behind there, OK? So you're going to need to make a lot of copies. One category ledger page for each category and subcategory. Continue tracking your spending by entering the figures on the appropriate category ledger page. So now, as soon as you get this in this binder, you are starting to write down your expenses in there. You may not make a deposit yet, but for right now, just write down your expenses so you're starting to track them in this book. Purchase a cash envelope. That folder, purchase those. Determine which categories you are going to handle in cash. I will ask you next week which ones you've chosen to do. Next week, we're going to do role play of the money date. I'm going to show you exactly how Karen and I do these, how we do handle the money, how we sit down together and make this work. We're also going to start on increasing savings and elimination of debt next week. Very important week. Do not miss it. It's a very important week next week, OK? Questions, my friends, how are we doing? Was this helpful tonight? Yeah. All right, we appreciate you being here. Let's, uh, we'll close, and of course, if you have any questions afterwards, come and join us, but uh, let, let me pray for you. Dear Lord, uh, as we 
in this evening tonight. I just thank you so very much for all the great interest and the great questions. And we know that this is hard work, but we just thank you for our time together tonight. And I just ask that this week you would free up the time and the focus and help everyone to work through any frustration that there is so that we can uh, just continue to make steady progress on making this budget a reality. Bring us all back together safely next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Bless you all. Be safe tonight, okay?